Greetings and well met. My name is Giovanni Scarpati and I'm a designer on the Hearthstone team. In Cobalt's and Catacombs, you dungeoneer deep into the depths of the Cobalt Mines. In The Witchwood, you champion new heroes to face off against Hagatha and the monsters outside Gilnaeus. But, in the spirit of the Boomsday Project, you'll be doing something a bit more... experimental. Puzzles. When you enter Dr. Boom's Puzzle Lab, you'll be met with a screen similar to those of previous solo adventures. This is Boom Labs! We do good work for bad ends. Each lab represents one of four different puzzle types. Lethal, Mirror, Board Clear, and Survival. However, this time around, you can progress to the labs in any order. If you ever get stuck or want to try something else, you're free to jump around. Within each puzzle lab, you'll have the opportunity to help each of Dr. Boom's head scientists and their assistants with experiments by solving puzzles. The puzzles start off easy to teach you the basics, but get more complex as you progress to the labs, occasionally throwing in some new unique cards to help spice things up. This puzzle's a real twister! When we decided to do puzzles, we knew we wanted a few different kinds. Lethal was an obvious choice. These types of puzzles have been circulating through the community since the dawn of Hearthstone. Time to put this necro good use. It's the type of content that you run into naturally, from big tournaments to daily play. The objective is straightforward, clear, and is just a great starting point for anyone. But since it's a single player, we get to introduce some weird new mechanics and situations you'd otherwise never run into. With Lethal locked in, we did some brainstorming. What are some other twists on Hearthstone's gameplay? Survival came about as a sort of reverse lethal. Are you a new test subject? I will light the fuse. It's not often that you're in a situation where you get to maximize healing on yourself. We originally called it the Death Ray Lab, with one of Dr. Boom's giant inventions pointed at you, charging up over the course of three turns. However, after playing with the idea, we decided to make all of the puzzles take place over one turn, so you didn't spend too long looking ahead, and so that restarts felt fast and clear. Board clear was also a natural type of puzzle for Hearthstone. After all, you're always trying to control the battlefield. But that wasn't enough by itself. I mean, this is Dr. Boom's lab after all. I've untangled the hose, boss! It's not really a true board clear, unless you're trying to blow up all your own minions as well. Suddenly, your minions that summon other minions with their death rattles don't feel so helpful. And of course, a single card like Defile can open up a whole new subset of puzzles. For the final lab, we wanted something different, something strange. We like Nier puzzles because they require you to think outside the box and play Hearthstone like never before. Here we go again. Already the minions, sir. In Nier puzzles, you need to copy your opponent's minions exactly, from the position to the attack and health. While it starts off simple, you quickly realize that unlike the rest of the puzzles, your goal is always shifting because of the way you can interact with your opponent's minions. Do I heal their minions to match mine or just get rid of both? Given the unique objective, there's often quite a few paths to different solutions, and I'm sure the community will surprise us with some of their own creative answers. Whenever we create new missions for Hearthstone, we want to make sure it's got the same sense of polish and charm as the rest of the game. When it came to the puzzle lab, we had a ton of puzzles, but we had to figure out how to display them while still retaining Hearthstone's usual look and feel. That's where the user interface, or UI, comes in. To share more info about that, here's Max Ma. Thanks, Giovanni. On the Hearthstone team, we believe that the best UI is invisible. This means the interface shouldn't get in the way of players enjoying the game. But when you have over 100 puzzles available, suddenly the UI becomes very visible and in your face. Imagine selecting a puzzle, loading up the game, finishing in a couple of minutes, and then backing out to select the next one, and repeat this for over 100 times. Nobody wants that. So, in the early stage of UI design, we decided to stack the puzzles into groups of eight or nine, which is what we felt was the right amount of content per play session. That way, seeing through just one loading screen would allow you to enjoy puzzle labs for much longer. Also, if you decided that you need to take a break, you'll be able to leave any time and come back later to resume where you left off. Next, let's talk about transitions between puzzles. When you successfully solve a puzzle, everything on the board and in your hand vanishes and is replaced by new minions and new cards for the next one. There is a lot going on behind the scenes to ensure the transition is fast and smooth. And this is something that seems easy, but took us a lot of time to get it to feel right, so that everyone will be able to spend more time playing and less time waiting around. We know puzzle labs can get challenging, and we want to make our players feel comfortable with experimenting, being creative, and most importantly, unafraid of making mistakes. So we added something just to help you with that. It's the reset button. If you find yourself stumped, cast the wrong spell, attack the wrong minion, 
or did things in the wrong order? That's okay. All you need to do is hit the reset button and try again. We actually got a little help from Giovanni as we we're designing the UI. Remember the sliding panel on the puzzle selection screen? It was initially meant to slide off completely to reveal each lab. But one day Giovanni stopped by my desk and saw an early sketch of that screen and said, oh, that looks like a progress bar. And that made us think, what would a progress bar look like in Dr. Boom's lab, where explosives are lying around? That's where we came up with the idea of using a sliding, glass-proof door to slowly unveil each puzzle lab as players progress. Thanks, Max. We've already shared a lot about the puzzle labs, but we need to talk about its finale before we end. The puzzles ramp up in difficulty as you work your way through the different labs. But the most difficult puzzles of all are against Dr. Boom. Boy, are these puzzles rough. Science is the answer! What was the question again? In one of our playtests, we had a group huddled around some final designers trying to solve the final Dr. Boom board clear puzzle. Watching them tag team the puzzle and attempt different solutions was hilarious. In fact, having people stop by to watch others solve puzzles or spitball solutions was commonplace throughout development. You know you're onto something fun when your coworkers don't want to stop testing the new content. Even Dave Kosak, the lead mission designer, spent over an hour being stuck on a puzzle and couldn't help test the rest of the content because he absolutely refused to look up the answer. We had a ton of fun crafting these puzzles, and we can't wait to see you experiment with them. Dr. Boom has hired you to do science, so go forth and do science in whatever order you want. We've built the puzzle lab to be just that, and we hope you'll enjoy it.